so welcome everyone uh, to cord cutting. I love cord cutting. Like for me, this is a, a daily, a part of my daily practice. Um, and again, as I mentioned, there there shouldn't be anyone in the recording but me. Uh, well, it's important to respect everyone's privacy, and also like later when you're doing the ceremony, you're gonna look like this. And no one wants to be recorded like that, <laughs> like no one. Um, so, um, uh, and I will put this and then the meditation on YouTube so you all can go back in and practice them. Um, to start with, I mean, we think of, hmm? What's your phone number? Oh, I'm Bonita Woods. Yeah. And if you want to find my website or any of my social media, it's all Boney Twits. I just name everything after myself, um, which is really fun when people meet me because they, they think of Boney to Woods as like the name of an organization, not a person, because it means beautiful forest. And then when they meet me in person, they sometimes people really crack up laughing because it's out of our their their conception so um anyway i want you to stop and think for a moment about imagine a being an eternal being of divine love like just let your mind open don't use your brain to, just your mind open what is an eternal being of divine love what what would this being look like what would this being feel like you know, what, how would this being, what frequencies, sounds, what kind of resonance, what would this being bring to us if a being, an eternal being of divine love came right here into the middle of the room? Yeah. How would that feel? So, of course, these are wonderful chords of connection that make us feel good. You know, and thoughts come into our mind about like angelic resonance, ascended masters, guardians, guides. Um, so bringing us back to why we're here, us. Um, hi, come on in. Um, how many people in this room, raise your hand, if you believe in reincarnation or the possibility of reincarnation? Okay. So when we think, what is reincarnation? It is someone who lives again and again, either in this form or another form. Certainly when I've done past life readings for people, I'll say something like, oh yeah, uh, you don't just incarnate as a human. You also like to incarnate with these beings or those, or you're not originally from human. You originally came elsewhere, things like that. So if each of us, incarnates, then we are eternal beings. And we have the potential to be eternal beings of divine love. So if we each have the potential of being divine, eternal, loving beings, why the heck are we bothering with all the nonsense that drags us down, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it just weights on our divinity. Like, you don't need to believe in God or any particular religion to be able to say, I get to be filled with my own personal sense of divinity. And that divinity can flow into me from my higher self, my non-physical self, my eternal sense of self, and fill myself and flow out. This is literally our right without any thought of what is your theological, religious, or scientific belief. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because, hi, because um, cord cutting is a process of helping release everything that um, is keeping us from that sort of state or from any state that you desire. I want to be an eternal being of absolute hysterical laughter. I want to be an eternal being of high adventure. Like we, we get to, you know, the, whatever we want, you know, um, 
if you say, oh, of all the Winnie the Pooh characters, Eeyore is my favorite. I want to be an eternal being of divine depression. I mean, that's your choice too. But it all comes from a choice inward, reflecting outward. Um, there um, is this wonderful man that I've worked with, uh, Leroy Malouf, and he works, he teaches about the integral importance of being emotionally neutral because um, in life we are either acting or reacting. And if you are reacting to something, then that's sort of a knee jerk process, you know, an automatic process, not a what is my true feeling in response to this. So um, I know some years ago I was at a family get together, um, a family reunion, and I was looking around going, you know, all of us kids are adults, many of us with kids of our own. And as soon as we all get together, and all of us have like careers and friends and social lives where we're respected and admired. And as soon as we get together, it's like we're nine years old again, and we're fighting over stupid stuff and like old wounds are opening and we're like, you always did this and you never did that. And I'm like, oh my God, I literally have not seen this person in five years and we're already having this fight from, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So this is where when you're neutral, you can say, if I were meeting this person for the first time ever, how would I treat this person? But because I'm meeting this person for the thousandth time, this meeting is not just about this meeting, it's this meeting plus all the thousand previous meetings and everything that happened in my life that was ever impacted by whatever happened in those meetings. So cord cutting allows us to release all of the reactive stuff and really learn to be in the moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's powerful. It's wonderful. Uh, for healers, like uh, you get to the point where you can cord cut very quickly. Like when I'm between clients, I'll do a cord cutting, a total cord cutting in like 10 seconds, you know, and uh, because, you, you know, like anything, practice makes uh, comfort. I won't say perfect, but comfort. Uh, one time I had a client who I had to release her from to another healer to continue because um, she was just becoming very uh, angry and demanding. Um, and she had issues that I was not able to help. So I referred her to another healer who specialized in her kinds of issues. Um, the more she was working with me, the more her issues were becoming inflamed as opposed to the personal healing. And so um, after our final meeting where she was very angry with me, um, as soon as we're done, I did a full cord cutting, full cord. As soon as I was done with a whole cord cutting of like, I need to make sure I'm not connected with this woman for her well-being as well as my own. My phone rang. She called me screaming at me. How dare you cut me off from you? So the cord cutting is powerful. Um, and, you know, in this case, she felt, it. she felt it. She felt it. And I'll tell you, people will always feel it. But she's the only one who ever screamed at me about it. But then she started working with the other healer and her, you know, she's doing very well now. I was just not the person for her to work with. Um, before every family reunion, I do a cord cutting ceremony for myself and my entire family. They don't believe in cord cutting. You can do it for other people. Yes. Yeah. Now you cannot do it really between other people. Well, that's an advanced technique. So you can, but I wouldn't suggest it. I would suggest for what we learned today, it's for self to others. But when I do a cord cutting for myself and my family, um, what it is is it releases all non-love. It cleanses and amplifies love. So we always have a better get together for it. All of those, when I was 11 years old, you threw a spider at me issues are like gone. When I worked in uh, corporate work before 
every big meeting or every meeting with someone who, you know, I mean, in corporate world, there are people who like to sabotage others. So I did a lot of cord cutting and it really gave me a Teflon, you know, persona within the work that I did made a huge difference because like I'd be in a corporate meeting and there'd be the person trying to sabotage me and the head of HR where, you know, whoever's running the meeting would be like, you two need to work your stuff out. I go, there's nothing here. I don't have any issues. And they look at me like, that's right. Benita doesn't have any issues. They turn the other person, you need to figure stuff out. So, um, it, the, it does, it does work. You know, it, it really does. It does create a, um, an area of neutrality where only love can connect. It's, um, now if you say to someone, you know, I did a cord cutting ceremony on us, they may or may not appreciate that. Um, but if you do the ceremony and you see your connections to people, you will like, um, Come on in. Um, oh yeah, there's a couple of seats over there. Oh, that's okay. And we're recording it so you can catch up on what you missed. Um, I'm going to load it up to YouTube. So no worries. We're just talking about the benefits of cord cutting. Hi. Um, I have a, a friend who would do it in her workplace. You know how like often in the workplace you have that one person who goes around like just wanting to hang out and talk and gossip or, you know, uh, he would do cord cutting between himself and those people and they never bothered him. They would go bother everyone else, but they felt like there was nothing to connect to with him. So they didn't. Uh, for people who have a loving relationship, but there's like eh, issues, you know, the cord cutting releases the eh, stuff and it enhances the love. If you do a cord cutting and there's nothing there, then that lets you know there's no love in the relationship. Now, again, if it's like you and uh, someone you work with, that might be fine. You might say, oh yeah, but there's some respect or, you know, we're able to work together. But if it's between you and, you know, some like your spouse, that might be something to look at. Oh, you know, my spouse and I did a cord cutting and there was nothing there. Then you have to look and wonder what, why are you in a relationship? Like if, if you do a cord cutting, it releases non-love, but it enhances love because you can't sever love. So if you do a cord cutting and there's nothing there, then that means there's no love either. absolutely completely nothing then uh and i've seen some people say you know what we took that and we rebuilt the love which is possible other people said we took that and realized what the heck are we doing with each other and we divorced you know there there are many things that that you can do from there there's no one pat answer um, and that's where the cord cutting takes you to a state of neutrality so you're not reacting anymore. You get to stop and say, what is my true action? What is my true response? What is my true feeling? Um, so like I said, it is a, a very powerful and um, effective tool. Um, cord cutting has existed in like every culture around the world. Uh, most cultures now follow the traditional shamanic style. And, um, but like if you look up Druidic or like any culture or anywhere, you, um, it may take some digging, but you can find this. And this is because we have lines of energy that connect all of us. Um, those of you who follow me on social media, so I posted the picture of the brain neurons firing and then the image of the universe. And, you know, they look the same. They look the same with the lines of energy that connect all the, all the points of, of uh, response there. So, you know, when you connect with someone like, 
Renessa and I have worked together for a number of years, and I consider her a dear friend. We've been there for each other through thick and thin. We've had times where we haven't communicated for a couple of months, and then times where we've communicated on a near daily basis. There's a lot of love and appreciation. We've both seen each other as we've gone through our personal challenges. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so we have a lot of connection there. Now, um, Rose Maria and I have known each other for a little over a year. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, a lot's happened in that year. So we have strong connection. So the moment these two women meet for the first time, which I, I know you've met before, but if this were the first time, because they're both so strongly connected with me, they would automatically and naturally get a connection with each other because it's just like laws of magnetic attraction. You know, um, and honestly, when you come into the world of cord cutting and you're dealing with reincarnation, Suppose we knew each other in a past life. Maybe we were twin sisters in a past life. And then uh, the two of you knew each other in a whole different life. Well, automatically we have some level of connection. And what if some life you were at a long time ago, I give you a splinter of my soul to help you with a challenge while you're in that life. Then we would have that connection and everyone you were connected to in that life. And then when you bring in ancestral connections, like if there's anyone here who's Hindu or Buddhist, powerful ancestral healing, when you bring in your ancestors and your past lives and the ancestors of your past lives, I mean, it immediately there is like no way to get through any life where you're not connected to literally everyone you meet in one way, shape or form, either directly or indirectly. So the more we are able to bring in love for ourselves and send the love out, the better for everyone. Because when you send your love out, you're literally sending it out to everyone. And uh, the less weights of this life nonsense that hangs us down, the better. So cord cutting releases all of those weights that keep you from shining your brightest and that lightens up your energy so that you can like send out even more. Whether you are here to like heal the planet or to just have a good life, it doesn't matter because you're like shining with your own brightness. It helps you sleep better at night, which is really good. It helps reduce anxiety. It helps you when you meet people to immediately determine, is this energy, is this connection healthy for me? To what percentage? Oh, this person's really healthy for me as a uh, casual acquaintance. Oh, this person's healthy for me at a really big distance. Oh, you know, it really lets you find out like what works. Um, and I'll tell you, um, not to like promote manipulation, but when you learn how to work with the energy and then when you meet people, you can pick up on the most positive lines of connection and enhance them. It makes people really want to be around you. I am coming through an IRS audit. So this is like, whoa, everyone's favorite way to spend a year. <laughs> And um, it is a 14-year audit, which they don't even do, but somehow for me, they do. I have spent an insane amount of time on the phone with IRS agents, visiting IRS offices. Um, I had to represent myself because there's literally no accountant on the world who wants to handle this. And it has been the most pleasurable experience because I've worked with the lines of energy with everyone that I've worked with. And, you know, I think if you're an IRS phone agent and someone calls and they're pleasant and polite, then like they don't want to get off the phone. They want to help me as much as they can because they know the next person's going to be like screaming or crying or stressed out. 
So we got through all of this, actually, like I, the only anxiety I had was before I started, I'm like, ah, but once I got into it, I realized, oh my God, this is an amazing opportunity for self-growth. And I knew that I hadn't done anything wrong, so it would just be like a tedious process, but it actually turned out to be really um, surprisingly wonderful. And I had a lot of great, like, I got to really connect with a lot of people heart to heart. People that I've never met before, will never meet again. There were voices on the phone, but still it was like so much love going back and forth as we were crunching through numbers and they were telling me about this form and that form. So there's a lot that cord cutting sets you up with a platform for a skill set to really enhance all connections in your life. Um, does anyone have questions on that? Okay. Um, so, like I said, if you go into any culture historically, because like back in the day before people started making more and more rules and regulations and you know, connecting with each other through cell phones or, you know, whatnot. When people were more connected on Earth, uh, we were more heart-centric, you know. Um, I mean, we still are now. That's why we have heart-centered healing. <laughs> um, so a lot of indigenous cultures have cord cutting, the Ho'oponopono of the Hawaiian culture is all about this. If you live on a small island in the Pacific Ocean, then you want to maintain a community that the size of your community can be supported by the environment without causing harm to the environment or starvation to the community. So they would live in many small communities around the island or around the islands, and these communities would be very interactive. If you were like, say we're a community, and we're together all day, every day pretty much, whenever one person is not feeling well, everyone else feels it. And when that happens, they're not gonna be like, hey, Benito, what's wrong? Get your act together, you're bumming everyone out. You know, what they would say is one of us is ill, so therefore all of us are ill, so all of us become together with the one to help the one become well. It is a very, very powerful love-based healing modality that uh, if you haven't ever worked with Ho'oponopono before, I totally recommend researching it. It is so beautiful and so powerful. When my boys were young, you know, I'd call home, hi, I'm coming home, and I hear video games. I'm like, have you done your homework? Oh, you know, the next thing I know, like this happy, hi, mommy's coming home call turns into like screaming and fighting and phone slamming. I'm like, oh, how did one minute flip on itself like that? Stop and do Ho'oponopono with my boys because, you know, they came from my body, so therefore, like, this is a very natural way to heal. And when I get home, there's boys doing homework. Hey, mom, we're so sorry. We love you, you know. And I'm like, wow, you know, not that I want to use it for manipulative purposes, but it was very good for their GPA. <laughs> um, in shamanic studies, um, I know this woman, Kelly, who is an amazing healer, and uh, she works with a style of, of cord cutting and cleansing that actually um, the only real practitioners for it right now are on, are on like the northwest part of Alaska on an island. Um, and it's a very traditional, like pure form of shamanic work where she can look at any person and see all the lines of energy that go to, from you to the most powerful connections. So she can see your ancestors and what kind of energy is connected with your ancestors. Uh, she And she'll look at like, she can see all of it. And she does this healing where she does a dance through your energy 
cleansing and purifying your connection to people you love, to your past lives, to your guides, to whomever. She completely purifies in this very sacred dance, and the dance is specific for each person in the moment. It's a guided dance. Where she live? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know her last name. Um, uh, I mean, this is not something she does, like, for her profession. It's just something that I, I think she's a massage therapist by profession. But it's really amazing. I'll, I'll sit. Uh, yeah, yeah, like an hour's drive out into Virginia. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see if she's if she's willing. Maybe we can get her here one day because she's really she's really uh, beautiful. I haven't seen her in a few years, but she was like I was like one of the most amazing events of my life seeing her, and then we kept in touch a little bit. But you know, life. Um, so when I learned prana shakti, which is an ancient Hindu form of energy work, where um, you know you uh, literally connect with all frequencies and dimensions, and it's very very powerful. One of the things that I was trained in was ancestral healing, and it struck me how similar this was to what Kelly did, where. Um, we're connected to all the ancestors of this life. Okay, so I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm connected to all the ancestors of my life. However, several of my past lives are here with me in this life to help guide. They're past lives that feel connected to the path I chose for this life. Either they're here to help and guide me, or they're here to because maybe they need to wrap up a little karmic lessons of their life and they can do it by being along on my life. Or they're here because they need a little healing. Or they're there because they think this will be really entertaining and they just want to have a good laugh. I call those the peanut gallery past lives. And uh, we, each and every one of us, have the same thing. So I'm connected to each of those past lives. They're connected to all of their ancestors. So again, it can get pretty complicated. When you are a child in life, the ancestors are all there, like of this life. We'll keep it back to simple-ish. Your ancestors are watching over you along with everyone else in your, in your family, that, you know, in your bloodline. If you have a happy childhood, the ancestors that connect strongest to happiness will be connecting with you powerfully in your childhood. If you have, you know, a horrible, unhappy childhood, then those ancestors are connecting more strongly. In uh, Prana Shakti, I was trained in a way of healing the unhappy ancestors and helping everyone to become powerful and healthy so that we're not carrying the weight of that energy with us. You know, if you were a child and you're abused and unhappy, and then later you go through a lot of therapy to become a happy adult, and you're like, okay, I did everything I should. Why am I constantly being pulled back to unhappiness? In Prana Shakti and Hindu, they say, well, look to your ancestors. Have you made, you know, uh, made your peace with your ancestors? How so, do do that? it, you know, in uh, Hindu, uh, what is it? You need to feed like a thousand people within 30 days. I mean, there's all these ceremonies. And uh, in Pranashakti, there's a ceremony uh, I was taught where you bring all the ancestors together and then you connect powerfully with the happy, loving ancestors. And then you bring their energy in through the, the person to the unhappy ancestors. And you have to like, it, it's a big process. You know, it's a big ceremony. These things are. But cord cutting can also help. And uh, the cord cutting ceremony we're going to learn today is one where um, you can do this ceremony for anything you want to check on your connection with. You can do it with your connection with your family, 
with your boss or as we were talking about that annoying person who vampires everyone's energy at you know the the office gossip you can do it with your uh, personal issues anxiety uh, you know whatever whatever issues one has you can do it with your relationship with money you can do it towards um, say you're looking for a new job and it hasn't come along you can do a cord cutting on that so you release everything that's not good and every and like amplify everything that is good in your relationship to getting a new job or a promotion or you know um, I did it once uh, with a friend. We combined cord cutting with uh, tapping, you know, where you are tapping your points and chant, you know, saying like affirmations. Uh, God, this was a number of years ago. I, I called a friend of mine. I said, I'm tired of being a single mom working ridiculous hours. I want a boyfriend. And she said, okay, so let's uh, just open your mind and describe him because you're not making him up. What you're doing is connecting energetically to the man and he's out there. And then we're going to cleanse the energy between the two of you and attract him to you. So we did the whole thing. I described the man to the T. I was like, I said, I wanted him t not too tall, but tall enough that I felt petite beside him. I uh, want him to be in science or engineering, cosmology, physics, you know, somewhere in there. Um, I want him to be retired or near retirement and successful as he perceives the word success. Uh, I want him to love going to the theater and the symphony, but also love going camping and hiking. I want him to really love my boys and just like have so much fun with them, even more fun than he has with me. You know, I was like, like, this is like, I forget what else, robust sense of humor, um, intellectually curious and, uh, be totally cool with all this weird, funky meditation stuff I do. And uh, that was Wednesday, Friday, I was an event and I met this man. He was literally to the T, everything I said I wanted in the man. And we dated for a few months, but I forgot to say I want to be attracted to him. So <laughs> I felt so bad because he was this great guy and he was literally my wish list and I had no attract. He really got on my nerves so bad and it was awful because he's like this great guy. So I had to cut him loose. <laughs> I had to cut the cord. <laughs> So I'm just saying this um, so that you understand this uh, ceremony can be used for anything. And um, one thing that I will do sometimes if I'm feeling like a little, I'll sit in meditation and say, what's making me feel this way? And then I'll do a cord cutting ceremony for whatever I'm feeling. Or I'll say, here's my goal. I'm having trouble meeting it. What's blocking me? And then I'll do a, you know, do a little meditation, find out what's blocking me and cut that cord, it's huge with releasing. Um, sometimes, one time I did a cord cutting with my guides because of course they're sending only the best to me, but I'm having the human experience. Sometimes I get a little debris and clutter, you know, coming out from me. So by doing the cord cutting, it helped make me a better recipient of help and support from my guides and guardians. And it was very helpful. You know, it really um, instilled a lot more trust and faith in me. So I was able to like uh, receive more from them. You know, mostly advice, not, they didn't actually do anything helpful, but they gave me a lot of advice. Uh, not all of which I followed because I'm having my own human experience. <laughs> Okay, um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to tell you what we'll do and then we'll take a short break, like just five or ten minutes. Um, and then we're going, I'm going to lead you on a meditation. And the point of this sort of meditation is also the same process as when you go in the Akashic Records. It's to raise our frequency, raise our vibration to get to a place of very, very high vibration with our total sense of connection within it. Um, where I will take us to, we're going to um, 
and it's going to be a little bit of a guided meditation so i'll know a little more as i as uh we're all settled i'm go- they're just going to start talking through me because like at this point your guides and guardians are connected with mine and they're going to take over for the cord cutting but um what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves mentally and emotionally higher because uh while we can like if i'm like Oh, Renessa and I want to do some work together. And before we do work, we're going to do a quick cord cutting. She and I might both sit down and go, okay, done. Now let's work, you know, because we're just like doing a quick cleansing. But for the ceremony we want to do now, which gets everyone ready for the holidays and have the best wonderful time with our families, whether our families are with us physically or mentally or emotionally, you know, whatever, um, we're going to do the full ceremony. So we may go up stairs, we may go up an elevator, we may go up a mountain, we may be going up a tree, like flowing up tree sap to the clouds, however way you go. And I mentioned these multiple ways so that when you go into meditation for yourself in future, you just understand the point is to get yourself centered everything in alignment and flowing and then let yourself rise up uh sometimes i'll just rise up out of my body through my horror line on up higher higher the place we end up at is called the twilight realm or the bardo um, other names may come into your mind it's a land between time and space between physical and spiritual or physical and energetic it's a realm that exists outside of existence. Uh, some people may see it as like a butte on a mountaintop in the stars. Some people may see it as just an eternal state of twilight. However you see uh, or experience it, it can even change depending on the energy that you're there to work on. Um, it's a very sacred space where whenever you call anyone to meet you there they are contractually obligated to be there sometimes when i do a cord cutting with someone later they'll tell me that like they'll call me afterwards go hey did you just call me and cord cut me i'm like yeah i did how do you know they're like no i was there with you sometimes or other times it's like their higher self will be there or the soul level of this life will be there and that person will have no awareness so I'm going to say if we're going to cord cut with like a shaman, they're probably going to be aware of it. And if you're going to cord cut with, you know, again, the office gossip, they're not going to be aware of it. Okay. The higher frequency they exist in, the easier for them to feel the connection. But again, cord cutting is always about love cleansing. So anytime I have cord cut with a shaman and they're aware of it, they have felt honored. Um, so um so you call whoever or whatever to that place um today what we will do is we'll bring you to this place and i'm going to tell you first call you know one member of your family to you uh or friend one friend or family and then we're going to invite the rest to show up and we're going to end up where everyone in your extended family is there and after you do your cord cutting, it'll be a few times, we're gonna invite everyone there to do cord cutting. And so if you see with visual, you're gonna see everyone out there cutting their cords and they're gonna be like, eh, most of them will be pretty happy with that. Uh, some may just stand there like with their cord cutting implement in their hand, like, no, I'm not gonna do this. That's okay because you're doing it. Um, and then after we release your family, what we'll do is we'll invite a surprise visitor to come. So that way you will get to see without pre-planning whoever or whatever shows up. It may be your own broken heart over some old memory, or it may be like, who knows what will show up. And um, that will give you an opportunity to sort of see, you know, something there and then we'll see if they want to do anything else we'll find out um, when you do the cord cutting the cutting implement is unique for 
each of us. And it can change from cutting to cutting. The implement that you use to cut for a family cutting might not be the same implement that you use for, you know. So what I'm going to say is don't plan on what will be there. When you look in your hand, and I'm right-handed, so it's always in my right hand, um, you'll see whatever it is. For me, I have a flaming sword. It is huge, and it's got huge flames. Um, a friend of mine who's a shaman, he has these tiny sewing scissors. When he was a child, his mother was a seamstress, and to him, sewing scissors are the most powerful tool for, for cutting. Um, you know, I've had people with lightsabers. I had people say, my hand, my hand turned into the, you know. So don't worry about pre-planning. Everything will show itself. And when I talk about, um, again, seeing, keep in mind, um, it's not always seeing with your eyes. It might be seeing with your heart. It might be downloads of information. It might be a sense of knowing. You may be having like no experience at all, but so long as you stay neutral, things can flow in. And then later you'll go, wow, I felt like I was just listening to you and nothing was happening. And then I realized I feel so pure and cleansed. So whatever experience is happening for you, accept it as it comes in. Okay. For me, um, when I close my eyes, I see black. So when I talk about I'm seeing something, it's almost like if I were seeing it, I knew it would be this, like the information is loaded in. But when I remember afterwards, I'll remember every detail as though I had been there with all my senses because I let my spirit sight remain fully open and I'm not worried about what sense it will come in. Okay. I used to have lucid vision, but now it's like, I don't know. Things, things come and go as they wish. So the lucid vision went away a few years ago and now I connect on a different level. But it's in a way, you know, as powerful, in some ways more powerful, but a little more irritating because it's boring. So, <laughs> okay, uh, any questions about that? So what if you have multiple sets of person? You can invite that person to be the first one you meet and then we'll invite more and more. Yes. Oh, no, don't worry. Without question. Yeah, we're going to take five, ten minute break. Uh, there's restroom in the back.